But, but apart from that, how are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, thanks for uh, allowing me to come to the office. I mean, it, this feels like uh, going to the Bahamas or something. You're welcome. <laughs> Shall we dive in? Sure. How was the quarter? How did we end 2020? You mean from a business point of view? Yes. Give me the headlines. I mean, clearly, profit remains at uh, subdued levels compared to the situation before the crisis. But uh, a number of good things to mention. Good primary customer growth and more digital interactions. Good fee growth. Cost under control. And we've established ourselves as a clear sustainability leader. So overall, I think we had a very good quarter. It's a whole list. It's a whole list. <laughs> it was also the quarter that a lot of markets went back into lockdown. Where did we feel that? Well, first of all, our people felt it. Then see that in the economic activity. So economic activity is coming down again. Not as dramatic as we've seen in the first half of this year, but still. But yeah, we have, of course, uh, we thought there was light at the end of the tunnel. That's what we th thought uh, at the start of the fourth quarter. And I believe there is still light at the end of the tunnel. But the exact end of the tunnel um, is still a bit unclear. We don't know where the finish line is of all this. No, we don't know where the finish line is at the same point in time. What we do see that a number of the vaccination programs have really now kicked off in many geographies. Of course, the the, the virus is a uh, multi-headed monster. But I'm I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic that in the course of 2021, we will go back to a more normal situation, that economic activity will return to a more normal situation and that will benefit societies, that will, of course, benefit our clients. And that then also, of course, is beneficial for ING. Well, at some point, the, the, the fog will lift and we will see the real damage that was done to the economy. What do you expect to see? That is uncertain as yet. Uh, mm. Until now, and then I speak for ING, but also what I see in different countries in which we operate, we see limited defaults as of yet. Mm. There are many payment holidays provided by banks. ING, for example, provided 20 billion euro in payment holidays to clients across the globe. Many of those payment holidays, by the way, have lapsed and clients resumed paying their normal installments. So we don't see that much as yet. And I think that depending on when all of these measures stop and depending on how long it takes to vaccinate people in societies and therefore economic activity returning to normal, only then you will see the real impact of this humanitarian but also economic crisis. So let's reflect a little bit on, on the year that we're also closing, eh? 2020. We'll never forget it. No. Never. So what was the biggest achievement, you think, of ING this year? I'm very proud of the fact how in the middle of March, within a matter of days, uh, many of us uh, could work from home. That was a real accomplishment. And even more so because it helped us to continue to serve our clients. Do you think we could do that? I mean, the fact that I'm proud already tells you that I was also surprised that we were able to do it so swiftly, so smoothly, so quickly. And we are a digital strong company and hence we have a number of the foundations in place that uh, we benefited from. But this really put it to the test. And I think we passed the test uh, with uh, flying colors. Yeah. Well, it was also an important year for yourself. You, had, you started in a new job, yeah. seven months down the road. What did you learn about this role? What is new? I think that compared to my previous roles, what is in particularly new is the fact that um, everything that I say and do is being put under a microscope. We're doing uh, that right now. We're doing it right now. <laughs> and a microphone. In a microphone. <laughs> it's something that you are greatly getting used to. Uh, so the more experience you get, and that's with everything, I guess, that uh, you're getting more used to that that is the way that people look at you. Um, I, try to, I try not to get affected by it too much. Um, but at the same point in time, it also makes me more conscious oh. of what I say in certain situations. And I think that's just part of the role. Does it, does it put a filter on you a little bit? I'm mindful of it, no. but I try to stay as close to myself as I uh, can be. That's always the easiest thing to do, at least for me it is. But you, you come across pretty relaxed about it. I wouldn't sleep. <laughs> is, it, is it true 
that before COVID you never worked from home for one day? Yes, I think so. You I just cannot those. recall that I worked from home one day. Yeah. Why not? I was used to it. I thought I thought that uh, it it would work best if uh, I would uh, be surrounded by colleagues that that would uh, support teamwork. Uh, that I would miss out on uh, information if I would not be at the office. Mm. And, and and now you've done it for seven months under very difficult circumstances, if, I, if I'm if i right. Mostly from home, mostly. Yeah. And and how, how do you feel now? It's, it's not, yeah, it's depressing, right? No. Uh, it's not necessarily depressing, but uh, I think that I have what, what many people have. Uh, uh, the fact that you are working at home is quite efficient and you go through all these meetings, so it's efficient and you don't need to travel, so you don't lose too much time. Uh, on the other hand, there is a lack of informal contact so that you, you don't really hear how people feel, what their ideas are, what is the fabric mm -hmm. and what's happening in the organization, and, and that's what I miss. I think that's what everybody has. Say at, at some point in time, it's safe, it's safe to go back to the office. W will you say uh, bye-bye, working from home? No, we believe that um, working from home will continue. Of course, currently it is 100% or it's mostly for people to be working from home. Uh, we have said that we believe there will be a balance and what the exact balance will be, we do not know. And as soon as we're able to work from the office again, we're going to do experiments to see how that will work out and that will then determine what the balance will be. Yeah in working from home and working from office. Okay, well, let's see how that pans out. I really like the office, I have to say, I missed it. I j just have a, a very, some very brief questions about 2021. This is also an opportunity to, to build a better world. Uh, do you already see that happening? Or yeah, well, well, when we talk about building back a better world, there you see real impetus of governments, of politicians, but also of business leaders to look at how can we fight climate change. And for example, I was in the uh, uh, in a virtual session of the uh, World Economic Forum last week, and typically that would be physically in Davos, but last week it was you behind my you screen. You didn't have to bring your, your fur coat this time. No, I was at home. And uh, there I had a session with a number of uh, business leaders uh, from all across the world. And you can really see that many people are working towards building back better yeah. to see how we can adjust our processes, our interactions, our businesses to fight the climate change. And I think it's really important. What tops your list of, of things to do for 2021? Building out our digital offering. So working to becoming a data-driven digital leader. That tops my list. Yeah, and why that? Digital journeys will help us to get more personal, more smart, and more easy interaction with our clients. The, the time in which we approve loans, for example, mortgages, and we call that time to yes, uh, how long does it take to approve a mortgage, and then time to cash, how long does it take to actually provide the money for that approved mortgage. And if we can bring down the time in which we provide that service, time to yes, time to cash, then we will have an improved customer experience on that particular journey. Now, to become a better digital leader, we need to work with data. And data helps us to develop those customer journeys. Data also supports to drive innovation, and innovation can then be in the uh, areas of, for example, analytics or robotization. And data is helping to keep our bank safe and compliant. For example, we can use data to fight financial economic crime. So data-driven, because it will also help us to become a digital leader. And it's I I'm an IG client, it's yeah. gonna make me happy as well? I mean, uh, in the end, uh, a better digital experience starts with building better customer journeys. Okay, so finally, on a, on a personal note, um, let's hope life will get back to some kind of a normal this year. What's the thing that you're dying to do that you can't do now? Visit my parents. You're not visiting your parents at all? Uh, no, I have visited my parents in the last six months, I think once, and only at a relatively uh, large distance, so I would be very keen to uh, see them again. It will happen this year. I hope so. See you next quarter. Thank you. <laughs>